Hello viewers and welcome to our series entitled When Church Hurts. I'm Pastor Colin and this series is going to help and encourage people that have been misused, abused, ill-treated, belittled, rejected or hurt in various ways within a church context. For those who have become disillusioned with some of the shenanigans going on in churches today and are absolutely fed up of it. Having said that, let's jump straight into today's episode. Hello listeners, welcome to another episode in our series entitled When Church Hurts. Today's episode, we're going to continue by looking into the very important topic of forgiveness. And we're specifically going to look at the consequences spiritually of unforgiveness. Now we're going to start by looking at a scripture that gives us some insight into what happens spiritually when a person refuses to forgive. Matthew chapter 18 verses 23 to 30 and it reads, Therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. But he was not able to pay. His master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, and that payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him and forgave him the debt. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. And he would not, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what had been done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. So my heavenly father, will also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. So what do these scriptures tell us about unforgiveness and forgiveness? Well, number one, when we ask God to forgive us, he completely forgives us. Two, unforgiveness towards others puts us in spiritual torment and bondage. And three, God will deal with us similarly to the way we choose to forgive or not to forgive others. We can see from these scriptures that forgiveness is a commandment. In other words, an order. It is not a suggestion or a good idea. It is a commandment. As believers, it is something that we are required to obey. Otherwise, we are going against scripture and disobeying God. Sometimes people hurt us not because they plan to, but because they are so hurt and wounded themselves. They are operating out of pain and brokenness. We may think we know exactly why a person has done something to us, but only God really knows an individual's heart. Hurt people hurt people because they are wounded in some way and don't know any better. Let's have a look at Luke 23 verses 33 to 35. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Those who mocked, spat on, jeered at and crucified Jesus did not understand why they were compelled and driven to do evil or the consequences of it. Sometimes someone sinning against us 
may well be the result of some demonic doorway in their own life and they are driven to do evil. But whatever the reason behind the person's actions, God always expects us to forgive them for our own sake, not theirs. 1 John chapter 4, verse 20. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? A real measure of our relationship with God is how we respond in situations in life that have caused us great pain, especially when it is at the hands of other believers. So what are some indicators of unforgiveness? Well, it could be A, a desire to make the other person pay for what they did, taking revenge. Having said that, of course, when it comes to a crime, it does need to be reported. Or it could be B, character assassination of the other person. Continually speaking or continually repeating to others what happened long after the event. Now, there is a place for speaking about our pain to other mature believers who can pray with us or during a counselling session. But a person's motivation for rehearsing the events and who they choose to share it with is quite telling. C. Feeling of not being able to get on with life, feeling stuck, could be another um, evidence of someone who hasn't forgiven. Or D, whenever the person's name is mentioned or you see them in person, feelings of rage, anger, resentment or hatred rise up from within. Or it could be E, refusing to accept an apology from the other person. Now this list is not exhaustive and there may be other signs that a person is holding on to unforgiveness but these are just a few indicators. If a person holds on to unforgiveness there is also the danger that it may develop into bitterness if not dealt with scripturally. Hebrews chapter 12 verses 14 to 15 Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord looking carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. Bitterness has the effect of spreading through the air gates of other people, especially if they are not mature enough and may cause them to also become defiled by what they hear. It will inevitably cause them to harbour unforgiveness towards someone who has not done anything wrong to them personally. So let's have a look at some misunderstandings about forgiveness. Some reasons behind why, for many people unfortunately, forgiveness is a very difficult thing to do. Number one, forgiving someone that has wronged us means that they are getting away with what they did to us. Well no, not really. In reality, what we're doing is releasing ourselves from the spiritual tie to them and letting God deal with them in his own way and in his own time. Romans 12 verses 18 to 20, I'm going to read from the Living Bible version. Don't quarrel with anyone. Be at peace with everyone, just as much as possible. Dear friends, never avenge yourselves. Leave that to God, for he has said that he will repay those who deserve it. Don't take the law into your own hands. Instead, feed your enemy if he is hungry. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink and you will be heaping coals of fire on his head. In other words, he will feel ashamed of himself for what he has done to you. Number two, forgiveness means that I should attempt to reconcile with the person who has hurt me. Well, again, no. Forgiveness does not mean putting yourself back in a vulnerable position with someone who is unsafe or abusive. Forgiveness does not mean that you have to reconcile with someone to forgive them. It has to do with your own personal relationship between you and God. Number three, forgiveness means that I should not report the other person's crime against me to the police or appropriate authorities. That is not true either. A person can forgive someone who has committed a crime against them and yet still testify against them in court. If a crime has been committed against you, forgiveness does not mean you should not report it to the police. Number four, 
Forgiveness is a bit like sweeping it under the carpet as if it was inconsequential. That is not true neither. What happened to you is not inconsequential to God. He just wants you to hand it over to him to deal with. Romans 12 and 19 tells us, Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. God knows how to deal with situations far better than we do. Number five, the other person should apologise before I forgive them, which will enable me to get closure. Again, not true. This is a misunderstanding of what biblical forgiveness is all about. God does not command us to forgive based upon another person's apology or response to us. This would potentially leave us in limbo. For example, what if the other person never apologises or if the other person has died? God never expects the other person to apologise to us for us to forgive them, even though from our human perspective an apology would be nice. Ultimately, forgiveness is about our relationship with God. It is between us and God, not us and the other person who has wronged us. And lastly, forgiving God. Now this may sound like an oxymoron, as God cannot sin, therefore he is in no need of our forgiveness. However, sometimes a person may blame God for all the bad things that have happened to them, especially in the context of church. They may not actually verbalise this, but questions in their heart like, God, why did you allow this to happen to me? Or, where were you, God, if you really cared about me? Although God does not need to repent, we will need to ask for his forgiveness for wrongfully blaming him for what we have suffered. Numbers 23 verse 19 tells us, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and he will not do, or has he spoken and will he not make it good? The reality about forgiveness is a person will have to live with the consequences of what was done to them and may not be able to change anything. For example, the murder of a loved one. Forgiveness will not bring that person back to life. Or it could be being rejected from a ministry or rejected from a ministry because of slander and lies. Forgiving those who have hurt you will not necessarily repair the damaged relationships which may be lost forever. As painful as it may be, you will have to trust God and get on with your life as best as possible with a forgiving heart. Now that may seem unfair, but the only choice is to live in the bondage of bitterness or in the freedom of forgiveness. Unless a person forgives from their heart, they will not be able to benefit from the deliverance or the healing that forgiveness enables a person to enjoy. So what are conclusions about forgiveness? Number one, forgiveness is a commandment from God which must be obeyed. Number two, unforgiveness has spiritual consequences. It binds us to the other person. Three, forgiveness removes any rights that Satan has over us. Four, forgiveness is about our relationship with God and is not reliant on the other person's apology or our need for so-called closure. Number five, a person cannot effectively heal spiritually without forgiving first. It may also bring physical healing in certain circumstances. And number six, they may need to ask God for his forgiveness for wrongfully blaming him. Finally, rest assured, if you have had the misfortune of being misused, abused, ill-treated, belittled, shunned, rejected or hurt in any way in church, God is not happy about it. There is life after spiritual abuse and God wants to restore the life of anyone who has suffered at the hands of others. Forgiveness is a very powerful and effective way that God has given us, enabling us to heal when church or in fact other situations have hurt us deeply. Well, that's it for this week. Join us again for another episode of When Church Hurts. But until then, take care, stay strong and keep the faith.